daily readings from the Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In Matthew 4, verse 4, in the desert, Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 8, saying, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Lord, this February, as we continue reading in the New Testament together, feed us from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, our reading today is James chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. 
Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. In our daily Bible readings, we come now to the letter of James. The introduction to the letter uh, from James in the Good News Version says this, the letter from James is a collection of practical instructions written to all God's people scattered over the whole world. Actually, James is writing to the 12 tribes. It, he's got Hebrew believers in mind primarily. But the introduction goes on, the writer uses many vivid figures of speech to present instructions regarding practical wisdom and guidance for Christian attitudes and conduct. He deals with a variety of topics such as riches and poverty, temptation, good conduct, pride and humility, judging others, boasting, patience and prayer. Uh, the letter emphasises the importance of actions along with faith. But as a letter, not everyone has warmed to the letter of James. Martin Luther, for example, called the letter of James an epistle of straw. Because of its emphasis on the importance of doing good and not just believing what is right. At the end of James 2, we read in verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Luther did not like the emphasis of, of James on deeds rather than faith. But James is not saying that we are saved by good deeds rather than, up, than by our faith in Jesus, but that However well, however deep our faith in Jesus is, it must be real. James wants to ensure that our faith in Jesus is living, real, practical and effective. One little fact that makes the letter of James such an important letter, even though some have turned their noses up at it a bit, is that the James who wrote it was not James the son of Zebedee, one of the original apostles, but James the son of Mary and Joseph, the flesh and blood brother of Jesus. The letter from James begins in verses 2 to 12 with an, an encouragement not to give up under trial and testing. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, James writes. The, the brother of Jesus calls us brothers and sisters. But as the brothers and sisters of Jesus, we will face all kinds of suffering and trial in this world, in this life. That God allows troubles and trials to come our way and afflict us may well from time to time puzzle and perplex us. If he really loved me, surely he would keep this from me. If he really loved me, he wouldn't make me go through this or that. James reminds us that the Lord's general dealing with his people is not so much to keep, keep us from trial and difficulty, but to keep us while we are in it. The saying, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger, is something James might have nodded his agreement to. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I wonder what trials 
you might be facing at the moment. Please, God, let the trials we are facing right now do us some good. But whilst in James 2, we will hear that faith without actions is dead. So we hear in chapter 1 that merely reading the Bible or listening to God's word is absolutely useless if we aren't willing to do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. In James chapter 1, we're reminded of Jesus' teaching in Matthew chapter 7, the wise and foolish builders. Whereas, where Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The foolish aren't those who don't hear. The foolish are those who hearing don't do, said Jesus. Well, James 1 says much the same. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Verse 21 in James 1 says, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. God's word saves, humbly accept it. But humble acceptance means living by it, doing it, rather than just reading it. Verse 22, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, as we continue with our daily Bible readings over the next few days, reading in the letter from James. O Lord, thank you for this reminder that there's little virtue in us just reading your word or listening to it if we don't humbly accept it and humbly accepting it, do it. Dear Lord, by your Holy Spirit in our trials, help us to endure. By your Holy Spirit, when we are tempted, help us to remain faithful. But dear Lord, by your Holy Spirit, cause us to do what your word says. In your name. Amen.